The following video is intended for adult collectors and is not recommended for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Kato again with another third party Transformers review. Today it's going to be Planet X's Pluto. It's their take on a fall of Cybertron Megatron. Probably the sharpest Transformer I've ever owned. And I mean that very literally. You will harm yourself in the transformation of this robot. <laughs> so if you get this guy, be careful. So yeah, I wanted to pick him up. He was on sale at Big Bad Toy Store, not sponsored. And uh, I just thought, hey, I haven't had a Fall of Cybertron or a video game based bite yet. So here we go. And we'll go through this review for a bit and see if I'm disappointed or not. Spoiler alert, I'm not disappointed. So uh, let's do what we do. Let's roll the intro. And come back and talk about this bot. Planet X, Pluto, Fall of Cybertron, Megatron. It's Kato! Okay, as far as accessories inside the box go, seems like a lot but it's really not. Of course, you do get the instructions. I'm not gonna really show a lot of those, but they're pretty much garbage anyway. So just either watch this video or watch other videos on how to transform this guy because the instructions suck. But in the box, you get his sword, which is absolutely awesome looking. That translucent purple and the light shining through there is amazing. A lot of sculpted detail on the hilt. Uh, not a lot, no paint on the hilt. So I don't know if there's a decal set out there for that, but either way, this sword is amazing and it will, it will wound you. It is very, very sharp. You get a stack of these, which let's see, one, two, three, four, five. You get six of these, which are made to go on his back right here. And I will install those after this review, uh, probably for my final thoughts, because I didn't want to put these things on and transform him until I was ready to leave him be for a bit, because they are also very sharp. But it's gray paint. Uh, yeah, I think it's gray paint and translucent purple. You get some screw hole covers on sprues. May or may not use these, don't know yet. And outside of the box, and maybe sent by a big bad toy store alone, is an extra hip ratchet joint. Now, I haven't had any trouble with mine, so I don't know why you would need this, but I guess it's cool that they have it just in case. And it's just a mushroom peg. So if you need that, it's there. You get card here with Planet X Pluto artwork on the front and tech specs on the back. And what would Megatron be without his fusion cannon? And this is one of the coolest molded fusion cannons I've seen. Lots of translucent purple with some red paint. It does extend for tank mode or robot mode if you want that to happen. And there's a little more translucent purple inside there. So this guy is really, really cool. But a lot of angular design which is faithful to the video game for sure. And that's the accessories. Now the sword pops in via friction inside of this little thing. And this is where you can actually really get hurt because the points on the end of his arm back here are sharp and so are the sword, but it just snaps right in there and he holds it just fine. And his fusion cannon just pegs on with this translucent purple peg into the side of his arm, which you'll have a bit of a trouble with because of the hinge on that. There you go. Now let's get to why we're all here. Megatron, Pluto, the purple and gray sharp knife of death thing that he is. Now it is very angular and weird looking, but it's very faithful to the video game if you guys have played it, which was fantastic. It was a great game. So you can look around, you can see there's plenty of translucent purple and mostly gray plastic, not a lot of paint. There's some red paint scattered throughout here on the legs and feet, but mostly purple paint and plastic 
with some gray plastic. And you can see here is where the little angular sharp doohickeys go in the back here, which again, I may add at, for my final thoughts. Really wild looking design, really unique design. I needed to buff up my Megatron shelf and this was on sale, so I did it, which I believe is still on sale at the filming of this video. So let's take a look at him close up. Face, absolutely, uh, make sure I focus, absolutely uh, a good representation of the game face. Uh, he is on a ball joint, so you can get some waggle. Uh, it will rotate left and right, but it will not go all the way around. You don't really need it that way, although I wish it would for transformation, and I'll show you that later. Nice molded detail inside the chest there. You can actually lift up the chest to reveal some more detail in here. Kind of a matrix of his own, I guess, of sorts. Of course, you get crazy amounts of arm articulation on these crazy ratchets. He will do 360, will go out we can go straight up there. You can extend it to get some extra range if you want. It's a very strange joint, but it works. And plenty of movement there. You get swivel at the bicep, about 90 degrees of elbow bend, swivel at the wrist, and typewriter fingers all on one pin and the thumb does not move. Pretty simple. It doesn't seem like you get waist articulation until you lower his area and then you can get some good waist articulation here. Uh, you can get 360, but you don't need it. Uh, these kind of get in the way so you can loosen those up. Legs out that far. And this is where that extra piece came in. I guess if you, they're the same on both sides. If you happen to damage that, you can replace it. They will go out that far, swivel, knee bend, and plenty of toe tilt. The toes are kind of weird. They're both on ball joints here, so you get heel articulation, toe, and ankle rocker. So plenty of movement there. So articulation, he's pretty good. I mean, pretty much anything you need out of a Megatron, you can do with the articulation they give you. Here he is next to Mastermind Creations Tyrantron which is probably the closest thing I have in scale to him. It's a really weird scale. It's kind of chuggish, probably more chug scale than this is. This is a little tall for that. So they kind of fall all over the place. But a couple of wild designs of Megatron here. And just to keep up with the crazy Megatrons, this is the War for Cybertron Siege unreleased G2 version. I don't know what they call that thing, but it was the Generation Selects Megatron. That kind of looks like the unreleased version of him. So you can see he's probably, I mean, you could probably use this for your Chug or for Cybertron, some kind of crazy thing there, because this scale is really good. He's a little taller than here. He would be re decent amount taller than Optimus. So yeah, I think that could work. And Poptimus. Now the transformation on this guy is a little weird. The instructions absolutely are horrible, uh, but you start by removing his fusion cannon. Let's set that to the side for now. You can start by rotate, opening those up and rotating this around, closing that up, make sure that lines up really well, and pu pushing in the arm and lowering those spikes. Same thing on this side. Lift that up, lift that down, or push that down, rotate around, and make sure this closes up. This one doesn't want to as often as well. Pull those spikes down, push that arm up. Now sometimes you'll have trouble getting these arms all the way in. That just means that your fist inside here is not quite in the right position. So now let's just rotate those up and get them out of the way. For now. Next you're going to come to the feet which are the, the legs which are the most annoying and this fooled me for a minute so you actually need to really put some effort into getting these down and they'll pull out and just kind of lay flat. Same with this one. Let that just kind of lay where it seems to make sense. 
Now you'll find a lot of things in, in the upper body start to kind of get in your way and come apart and it's obnoxious, but you just have to go with it. Take these, rotate these around. Now you're going to rotate. This is where the instructions were wrong. They, they look like they want you to rotate it that way. You can't rotate it this way. Now you're going to open these up and they sort of accordion down to the side, but again, they're going to go all over the place while you're transforming this thing. Now you're going to on this hinge right here, the lower hinge, move him in like so. All right. Now, again, nothing tabs in here. It's just sitting there. And now you're going to bring this down, bring the foot down, rotate it, rotate this part of the heel. And this is obnoxious right here. This piece right here, you need to rotate so that you can see the ball joint facing you. And honestly, it's supposed to tuck down in here, but <laughs> it's another one of those. It's just got to go where it goes. It, it, I don't know. It doesn't go anywhere. So make it work kind of moment. And now there's a slot right here and a peg right here. This is another annoying thing. It doesn't hold very well. Just kind of peg that in there. They just, it always wants to come out. You'll fold the toe in and tilt this up. And you're pretty much done with one leg. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So we'll rotate to the inside. Open this up, accordion those down. The end result is worth it, but it's a, it's a mess. It's a mess to do this thing. And fold that up. You can bring that down while you're folding, bring your heel out or your foot out while you're folding too. And again, so you can see the ball joint and just kind of get it in there somewhere. It doesn't really have a home. It just kind of goes. It's really ridiculous. This thing could have used with a few, used a few reasons to peg something into somewhere because until you get this thing together, it's a floppy fiddly mess and nothing feels like it has a home. All right, rotate the foot around, rotate the heel. If you can, it's hard to do behind the camera. Fold the toe in, fold that up, bring the heel down and same thing. Try to get it inside there and make sure that now you're just going to sandwich the arms in and they're just going to kind of be there again nothing really pegs and you can this will come up later so hang tight and there is about where you need to leave it for now until you can kind of straighten everything up later come to the back these things are a nightmare you're going to unpeg those Unpeg this and just kind of let it be. Now, it's smart to go ahead and peg this in. So it's going to peg with this into this hole right here. Right there. And here and here with these. Now, I made the mistake of do it, trying to do this later before. Don't. Do it right now. So peg that in with this wobbly, wobbly peg and you feel like you're going to break everything and there, peg that in nice and tight. I hope I got that on camera because it's a nightmare. Now, now you're going to swing this out and there's slots right here that will go with these pegs and this is why you do that first and you just kind of Make that work and then accordion this out and line that up. Okay. Now you're, you're there. This is where you'll know if you got the legs right. 
And once you close this up, these pegs and those holes should line up. And if they do, you pretty much did everything you could to get it right. Okay, then they did, yay me. Okay, now this piece kind of came up on its own, but it actually comes in and you can't really see, but there's little holes right here in these pegs and it will peg in right there. See that? And really that's one of like the three things that actually peg in in this thing, in this mode. All right, these are what's really annoying because they're on a swivel here, a hinge here, a hinge here, 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 they're all over the place. But you essentially want to get these wings into these holes right here. And the way you do it is you just move everything around until, well, that was about the easiest that ever happened. Now you can kind of look at this one and see what you did. So it is facing that way, this way, get it kind of under here and Peg it in. And there you go, and you can extend that out. Wow. Now you take the sword and peg it in right in his bunghole. You can't even see it, right in there. And it's going to go vertically. Yep, it's in his butt. And ladies and gentlemen, just like that, with no problems whatsoever, you have his crazy ass ship mode. It looks really cool and unique. Um, I, I can't complain about it. It is kind of hell to get here, but it looks really good. And you can always kind of, if things start slipping out of place, you can fix a few things and make it look right. I have to all the time because again, Things are all over the place on this guy, especially these guys. These pieces here kind of go all over the place. So anyway, yeah. You can see them from the top here. You can see all that red paint from the legs and the arms come here. These become the boosters, which were the fists. The transformation, it, the end result is pretty great. I mean, it's a really fun figure. And once you do the transformation a couple times, it makes sense. You just have to kind of let go of what you're used to, of things pegging in places, and this one just kind of goes in places. Absolutely nothing you can do about the head here. It's gonna be visible, so the little devil crab face down is kind of what you get. But there you go, that's him in his alt mode. And I'm pleasantly surprised considering how the transformation went. For scale, you can see there's a MP scale uh, Optimus that is Magic Square's Light of Freedom. Hey guys, real quick, I actually, um, while I was transforming this guy back to robot mode for my final thoughts, I realized I forgot a step, and it's kind of important. Um, inside here, before you tab in this part, he's got these little thrusters that come out, and they just come out and sit up high like that. So that's my bad, uh, sorry about that, but everything else is the same, and these just pop out. So my final thoughts on Planet X's Pluto, their version of the Fall of Cybertron video games Megatron, are pretty favorable. The transformation is annoying. It's not very fun, but it's not very difficult once you figure out the quirks of it. And that is get out of your own head about pegging things into places and just get into the frame of putting things where they belong and hope they stay until the final few things get pegged together at the end. Uh, accessory wise, minimal, but important. The sword is fantastic. The fusion cannon, I think is perfect for it. I think it sells the fall of Cybertron Megatron really well. You will hurt yourself putting this together. You can see I went ahead and put those spikes in the back there uh, because I think I'm done transforming this guy for a while. Um, 
They are very sharp, so be very careful, as well as the spikes on the back of his arms. Be careful on his arms when you're putting the sword in because you're going to want to push to snap the sword in. And if you push right here, you're going to poke yourself. It's going to hurt. So yeah, I may end up putting the sprue covers in or the screw covers in just because it'll finish it up a little bit. But overall, I couldn't be happier with it for the price on sale, at least. I don't know if I feel like it's worth to me uh, the full retail price, but while it's on sale, I would absolutely uh, recommend it. Thanks so much everyone for hanging out with me. I appreciate you very much. Uh, as always, please check out the other Rejecticons. Uh, their links are in the description below. That's Inutabi, Sardinus by 82, and Larkin's Lair. Uh, guys, I'm really close to that 500 subscriber mark at this point, and I'd really appreciate your help. So uh, subscribe, like, share, all that fancy stuff that you know makes the YouTube world go around. And as always, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and always play. This is Kato signing out. See you around like a donut. It's Kato.